Hey everyone, it's Dane again. Uh, as you can see, I've got a GameCube sitting behind me today, and that is because I'm going to install a Wii Duel kit into it. Uh, recently, someone uh, had gotten a hold of me, asked me to do a Wii Duel kit, and realized like I have not done one of those before, but I do have a GC Duel kit sitting around, so why not crack this thing open, get it installed, learn how to do it, and then I can do the, the uh, Wii Duel unit for somebody else. So let's get to it. Okay, first things first, we need to get this disassembled. So I'm going to need to get this uh, Game Boy player pulled off of here first thing. Now when the original GameCube was out, I actually uh, asked for one of these Game Boy players uh, for my birthday uh, one year. It's such a, such a cool system. And while I've not had a chance to uh, install um, Game Boy interface uh, yet uh, to mess around with uh, how this works. With the modern stuff, um, it is, I think, just an awesome piece of kit, really unique. And, uh, unscrew that a little bit. There we go. There is our Game Boy player free. Now, I have never actually gotten into one of these before. I have never wrenched on a GameCube. So this is all this is all pretty new to me. You can see our expansion port. I think those are game bit screws down in there. That's what it kind of looks like. So I need to grab my bit driver. My game bits. Okay, let's go ahead and start. Well, let's see, first of all, if this is the type of screw we're trying to get into. I would say that's exactly what that is. Oops, sorry, bumping the camera there. This so GameCube's a little bit taller than what I am usually working on in here. So I might actually need to uh, stop and adjust the camera a bit, pull it back out. Try to get this first screw pulled first. There we go. Oh wow, yeah, those are, those are huge. There's one, and yeah, I'm gonna go adjust the camera and be right back. Okay, that is a little bit better. Definitely got my my camera uh, raised up a little bit higher here, so we don't have to worry about bumping it quite as much, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and keep pulling screws here. It's okay, sometimes, sometimes the magnetic bit doesn't quite grab them, but those will just fall out when we uh, get it opened up. Okay, so I think now that all those screws are out, this top just sort of slides off. So that's exactly how that works. And looks like I can take F0 back out of there. Okay, this thing is pretty dense. There's a lot going on there. It is also like really dusty. So I'm gonna hit this with the air duster before I get into it too deep. Oh yeah, there are all kinds of crap coming out of there. All right, that's a good cursory attempt. Dog hair or something in there. That's what happens when you get secondhand stuff. You just never know what you're gonna pull out of there. I actually have a, uh, a power base converter for my second Genesis that um, I opened it up <clears throat> to clean it out. And uh, when I got in there, I discovered mud dauber wasp tubes inside, uh, <laughs> inside the power base converter. No idea how the heck that happened, but <clears throat> you know, I got the thing all cleaned up and it works just fine now. So yeah, you never know what, what the heck you're gonna find in these. Uh, okay, so let's kind of see what we got here. So RF shielding there, CD drive on top, controller ports up front. Looks like it'd be easy to replace the fan that's in there. Entirely convinced that that has to come out for disassembly. Now my guess is that we just need to hit all these screws I can see here. All right, does this back piece just come out? Oh yeah, okay, so you just sort of peel the thing back slides off. All right, well, I'm just going to start unscrewing all these screws along the edges. It appears to me that that's what is holding the main the main body in place. Now I just use a regular Phillips head for that. 
Oh yeah, there's like a lot in here. Alright, I'm gonna be quiet for the next part while I take these out so Nate, Nate can blast through this part. Okay, looks like I have to move this power connector to be able to get this screw that's in there. Right, looks like we can just take that, take this off entirely. It right, looks like we're gonna have to remove this fan assembly to get at that screw. is our fan assembly. Man, it's a little gnarly inside. Okay. That's good. Get it all cleaned up. Okay, <clears throat> I'm not entirely sure how this oh, Okay, so you just kind of pull forward on that. Sometimes that's how you get stuff out of there. Um, wrench on it till it comes out. I do want to be careful with that connector though, and not put too much, too much pressure on there. So you just wiggle that back and forth a little bit. And then your controller ports portion will come out. Looks like it'd be pretty easy to replace the LED in there too if you want. Simple mod. Okay, making progress. <clears throat> My guess is these screws need to come out. You can see we've separated our, our disk drive from the rest of the system. And um, we aren't currently gonna be doing any wrenching on this that I'm aware of, so I believe we can just set that, just set that aside. Okay. <clears throat> so now we're getting down to the stuff. Whoa, look at that dead spider. Yeah, big old dead wolf spider. <laughs> like I said, you never know what you're gonna find uh, inside one of these things when you open it up. So let's go ahead and I'll throw Mr. Spidey in the trash. So it looks to me like we have the screws on this heat sink um, holding the bottom portion of this board in place. So we'll go ahead and remove those. Okay, and those all have a little captive washer on there too. You may be able to see that I'm kind of putting the screws from the different steps into their own little compartments there. It just helps me keep things organized. So before I started on this, um, I didn't actually look up uh, any instructions on how to disassemble this. <clears throat> now, that's not what I suggest for anybody uh, when they do it, but for the purposes of these videos, what, you know, one of the things I'm trying to show is, uh, you know, my method for figuring out things as you go. Um, you know, and usually that's just sort of by being calm and looking things over and trying to kind of figure out what's happening. Um, but in general, 
<clears throat> if I'm working on my own stuff or anything like that, I, I will look it up. Um, but I think it's kind of a fun exercise when I'm doing these videos to step through the process of actually figuring things out. Um, all right, looks like that heat sink is still on there. Even though we pulled all those screws. Oh, it looks like that's held down with like thermal paste and stuff in there. So we probably don't want to mess with that too much. We might be able to just Yeah, okay. <clears throat> so all I did was push up on these two bits. And then our whole motherboard assembly uh, comes away. Very cool. Yeah, and it looks like maybe those heatsink screws were holding things in place. Interesting, that was really kind of bent. So there is the motherboard. There is so much more going on on this thing than uh, something like an NES when I'm you know, usually wrenching on that. So it's got a fair amount of SMD caps there. That's it, you know, it's, it's really not, not too crazy. Okay, so you can see that I have pulled the motherboard uh, entirely out of the shell. And uh, the part that we are interested in for our first step uh, are the two ports here, our uh, RGB uh, and our digital port. And um, this step uh, on the GC Dual uh, installation instruction says that basically we need to pull solder away from these points here because that is where uh, our, our new board is actually going to sit. It's going to sit on these points. So we need to get these following pins nice and flush. So to do that, we are going to, uh, I think I'm just going to use some desoldering braid. I'm not going to um, get the uh, desoldering vacuum uh, going for this, although that may come in handy later. We'll just see. Um, but yeah, I'm going to turn on my fume extractor and we will get that started. All right, a little bit of flux. And actually we'll add a little bit of new solder just to kind of help get things moving. Those bits have been reflowed. And I actually need to adjust my fume extractor here. Which means and we're back. To... Okay, making progress. All right, that side is done. Let's go ahead and add a little bit fresh solder over here. And I'm not going crazy here. Just, just getting enough to kind of get this reflowed. Hmm. Got a little bit on the, uh, the ground plane here. Eh, no big deal. I'll probably just pull that off with some solder wick. All right. So let's go ahead and remove some of this extra solder. Pretty good. It's pretty, pretty good and flush there already. Oh yeah, that's totally flat. You can see that got loaded up pretty good already, so clip that off. Now the reason I'm hitting both sides of these points is just try to get everything real good and flat so that QSB will sit right down on top. Oh, you know what? I didn't even have to do, I just checked my reference. Uh, I didn't even have to do these outer ones. Looks like on this side, it just wants these pins here. But no big deal, we'll, we'll hit those now. funny I didn't mean to fully desolder 
that pin, but it's almost fully done. It's okay, it'll get re-soldered into position when I attach the QSB. Okay, so that side's done. are being a little more stubborn so I think I'm going to hit them with a little bit more fresh solder just to encourage it to to move for me hmm. I'm gonna use a little flux because that is just kind of not kind of not moving the way I want so and that uh, desoldering braid is getting real hot. All right, that's pretty good. I'm almost done with this stuff. Okay, I think that's pretty good. It's crazy how quickly that solder braid fills up. All right, let's go ahead and do a quick cleanup on that area before we put anything else down on top of it. Okay, so I need to get my, my board and uh, use it some test fitting here. Okay, here are the boards from our GC Dual kit. And uh, this one is the one that we'll be interfacing uh, with the parts that we just desoldered here. So it's gonna sit just like that. And uh, this sits down really nice and flat. In fact, I didn't even need to hit some of these quite as much as I did, but that's okay. Um, now, the other thing to keep in mind uh, with this board is um, this series of pads right here um, are going to be what tells it the type of video uh, to spit out. Uh, in my case, you know, for this one, um, I would like for it to use the same type of signal uh, that my uh, Super Nintendo uses. Uh, that way I can get, you know, the exact same uh, cable I already, I already have. But furthermore, I will be able to test this with my existing uh, Super Nintendo setup. So I'm going to go pull up um, the examples of how you would set that uh, so we can take a look. Okay, so here I have uh, the various uh, jumper settings um, for us to look at. So uh, I'm going to be going with C-Sync, uh, which is a simple bridge between these two pins, um, but there's all kinds of options, right? Here we have Sync on Luma, um, Sync on Composite, uh, as well as all, all kinds of other stuff. So there, there's lots of good uh, options here. Um, but yeah, we just want, you know, the the most common one, uh, the most standard one right here, um, which will work uh, with our standard uh, RGBS C-Sync uh, with one of my Super Nintendo cables. Okay, so let's go ahead and set our jumpers for C-Sync. There we go. And that is our setting for C-Sync. Okay, let's go ahead and get our board soldered into place. Now for the fun stuff. All right, so I think the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, just hit a couple of these large uh, anchor points. Okay, now that board is secure already.
All right, yeah, we're getting there. Um, all of our big ones are totally put in place. Let's go ahead and hit some of these smaller pins. Okay, it's a little easier to bridge pins over on this side, um, which is actually not that big of a deal. Um, I'll just hit it with some flux and go back over and make sure nothing's bridged uh, when I'm all done. And actually the method I'm doing is I'm using the, the point of my soldering iron, putting it down in the hole, and then adding just a little bit of extra solder. And I did bridge a couple up here, so I'm just gonna reflow those real fast. Actually, yeah, it looks like you can kind of drag solder these once you get them put in. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna do a quick cleanup pass, and then we'll take a look. There we go. Pretty good. Let's take a closer look. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, go in pin by pin and check continuity uh, on all of these pins. And we just need to make sure that none of them are bridged, right? That would be very bad. Pretty straightforward to do. Set it to continuity mode. Should turn off my fume extractor for now. And let's see what we get. So I'm just checking ground on all those. Those are all connected to ground, just like they're supposed to be. Uh, and all of these are good. And by the way, these two should be because they're both ground. I kind of realize my fingers are in the way. I think, I think we're all set. That is all doing exactly what we would expect it to do. So the next thing actually I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna do off camera, but basically I'm gonna do the tedious process of going in and checking the pins that are uh, inside the ports here and uh, making sure that they have continuity with the correct pads on the QSB there. So that's gonna take a little bit of doing. I think that's gonna be kind of boring. So uh, I'm gonna go do that, be right back. Okay, next step, we are going to take uh, our main board here. We're going to lay it down and solder it into place here. Now, I don't know exactly like if I missed something during disassembly, but as you can see, there's a hole right there that has to line up perfectly. I have to be able to get a screw through there. So I don't know if I like wasn't supposed to move that or, or what. So I'm just going to be extra careful. Make sure that I have that lined up exactly. And to me, that hole looks 
exact. Um, these pins are off just like a tiny bit, so I gotta make sure those line up. Okay, that's it, like right there. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna have to do in order to actually get this right is uh, basically pre-tin my iron, get a little solder on there, get the thing lined up, and then uh, go ahead and just hit it with a little bit of solder. So my iron is loaded up. That pretty much looks perfect to me. That's all right, I just sort of globbed some, some solder on there to get it to stick. For now, I'm gonna go back and do a better job in a minute. Let's take a look. All right, let's just take one of these long pins and throw it through that middle. Yep, that looks, that looks just right. All right, so let's finish tacking this down. Looks. Hmm. If you look, I just bridge and like every pin there is, no big deal. Come back, flux. And we'll just keep working those pins till every all of them are lined up exactly the way we want. <clears throat> Not too bad. This is one of those cases where I'm just going to keep loading it up with flux and reworking it till it is exactly the way that I want. Mm, it's pretty darn good. There we go. So you can see nothing is bridged. That's why in cases like that, uh, where they want to bridge, just lots of flux work it back and forth until you're sure everything is is off and then do a quick cleanup and uh, test again for continuity all right let's see those are all separate All right, that all looks good. Making really pretty good progress here. Happy with how that's looking. Okay, so we have a support pad right here that needs to be soldered into place. It's this little notch that's cut out uh, that is a tied to an SMD, uh, looks like an SMD cap below it. I'll see if I can get in close enough. There we are. So we're just gonna solder those two bits together. Okay, that's easy enough to do. And that is what it will look like when you are done. Okay, so next up we have to do uh, a wire that we're gonna run to a specific spot uh, on the board. Now, we need to go ahead and tin this pad. Like so. Let me get just a little bit more on there, like that. Now the next spot we're trying to get to really really small uh, we need this point on the board right there so easiest way to find it is uh, come straight down see this big uh, I believe that's a cap yeah it's like a 220 uh, SMD cap that has another one right next to it it's got a little baby brother there um, that is next to C55 which is this really small piece we're gonna go up to the ro next row from that and then one down so it's this spot right here and see if I can get in close so we want this point right there all right so that is exposed so I'm just gonna go ahead and see if I can't let's go a little flux on there I'm gonna make sure my iron is really extra clean for this so I don't just slop solder all over the board What a really, really minuscule spot to solder to. So what I'm gonna do 
try to get that bead uh, a little bit bigger uh, as I'm working on it. Is I'm just gonna very quickly hit it with some more solder to try to kind of build it up a bit. Yeah, it's not gonna get much bigger than that. That is so, so small. Like, I'm not even sure what kind of wire to use for that. I mean, heck, that almost seems too big. But it is for the video line, so I think I can make it work. Tin wire real quick. All right, so anytime you've got to work on a pad uh, that is this small, uh, you do not want to anchor to it first, uh, especially in a case like this where we have a, a really nice, big, robust pad up here uh, that we can solder to first. Um, so what I'm gonna do is anchor to that spot, and then we will trim our line to the correct length uh, and then solder to the, the right spot. I think that's just about the right length. Okay, and that has to run down here. So we want to trim this line just on the other side of it, like so. Bend that wire up, strip it, and tin that. All right, so that's gonna go right there. And with this being a somewhat delicate maneuver, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tin the, the tip of my soldering iron beforehand. So hopefully all I have to do is kind of touch it and it will uh, go where I want. You know, it's kind of funny, it's actually the the thickness of the insulation is kind of making it difficult uh, to get it to weld the way I want. I almost need to um, grab it with my tweezers. That looks like a pretty good connection. So there we go. You can see it is a really minuscule point uh, that you have to solder to there, but it's doable. Just got to Kind of stay chill, tin it first, tin your iron, make sure your, your wire is tinned and it'll go for you. Excellent, all right, let's clean that area up. Gonna be real gentle with this as we clean around it. All right, very good, moving on. Okay, so next we need to attach our FFC cable. We're gonna just pull our connector out like so. Our blue part will be facing up. And you do want to be pretty gentle with these things as best you can. Alright, there we go. We are connected. So, that's pretty much like the mod itself, uh, really. Uh, we still have to uh, run our cable and uh, hook it up to our HDMI port here that we're gonna install. Um, but we are actually most of the way through this mod at this point. So the next uh, bit is gonna be uh, modifying the case, uh, modifying the RF shielding, making sure that all this stuff fits and can route through uh, so we can get our signal back out. So let's go do that now. Okay, you may have noticed that this is not put back together. I actually had to strip the whole thing back down. I was almost done putting it back together. Realized I forgot a critical uh, step earlier on. Uh, I am planning on using properly attenuated, uh, you know, uh, RGBS, C-Sync, Super Nintendo cables. Um, so they will have resistors in the cable, which means that I actually need to bridge JP2 uh, according to the directions. And again, I'm gonna triple check on this. Um, pull that up right quick. Let's see here. And it says, 
Okay, for SCART to hook up RGBS, you will need a SNES multi-out cable with a sync attenuation resistor inside the cable. That's what we want. Depending on how you wire the QSB will depend on which cable you need. Yes, all right. So 5.3 liter revisions, both types of SCART cables are supported. If your cable has an attenuation resistor inside, then make sure JP2 is closed, shorted. So JP2 is this little pad right there. So let's go ahead and uh, wake up soldering iron and do that real fast. Can't believe I had to tear the holder and thing down <laughs> uh, for that one thing, but it was either that or uh, use a cable that I don't want to use. So might as well do it the way we want. It takes a little extra work, that's okay. All right, there we go. Lots of work to tear the whole thing back down just to get at that, but that's okay. So, show you. You can see it is that dot right there. It says JP2 right above uh, the screw hole there. Okay, now let's get it put back together. Okay, so for the next part here, we need to actually modify the uh, uh, RF shielding here. And uh, according to the directions, we need to remove this section entirely. So I'm just gonna mark, mark the stuff that we wanna get rid of. So this whole bit here, as well as uh, a section right up here, kind of runs in line uh, with the edge of this cut. And it comes down a bit uh, on this side here as well. So those are the parts we're going to be removing. Uh, now, you know, sometimes I do that with um, side snips, um, but you know, it's it's not a bad way to dull up your side snips. So I'm probably just going to uh, get out my Dremel and, and hit this with a cutting wheel. Um, be sure to put on my safety glasses, but uh, I'll do it off camera. I don't really have a way to, to do that on my, my workbench right here. Uh, so we'll go get this cut and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. So you can see that I dremeled off this bit here and then uh, used the edge of the cutter uh, to make sure that, that was sitting flush. And I uh, cut out this portion uh, as well, which is where our, uh, our cable uh, is going to run out. <clears throat> so I believe the next step is actually to uh, put our board back in. So let's get that. This sits in there like so. Just trying to make sure that we're clear and that that cable is not caught on anything. But that all looks good. Let's go ahead and press it down in. All right, and then I think we are ready to reattach our heat sink. You know, these screws are kind of tricky, so I'm going to use my very handy pliers to get those put into place. That feels like it's cross-threading, so I'm going to pull that. I don't like what's going on there. problem there. It's not going to quite work, so I'm going to have to try to use the magnetic tip of my screwdriver to get that to sit down in there. Hmm. That is not seeming to pick up anything at all. That's weird. I think they're all the same. Yeah, that is just definitely not connecting to anything. I wonder, uh, I wonder if I was supposed to leave that one in. It doesn't seem like a big deal, but again, this is my first time doing one of these, so you definitely learn as you go. I don't suspect that's going to cause any issues. And 
And this one back here definitely seems like it wants to cross thread. Okay, well, that's in. Yeah, that one took a little elbow grease. What was going on with that one? Okay, well, there's five out of six. I don't know, I usually have an extra screw left over uh, when I work on things. Not always, but yeah, I don't think, and I don't know why, but that just does not seem to be uh, connecting to anything. So, hope I didn't miss anything important with that. Okay, looks like the next thing we're going to do is reinstall our uh, DVD-ROM. Just dust that a little bit. Just gonna reconnect our cable here. I always like to make sure I put my finger behind it just to support it when uh, reconnecting. And then in the instructions, it says to basically route this flex cable uh, up behind, like so. I don't know if it was suggested to run it on the inside of this plastic bit here. That's how I'm going to try to do it. That seems like it's sitting pretty good and flush right there. Okay, so uh, now we put all those screws back in here as I can tell. So let's do that now. Call there being a screw that was like impossible for me to get at. Oh yeah, I haven't put that board back in yet. All right, so we're good. You know what? Those screws take a little doing, so I'm gonna use my ratchet driver if I've got the right bits for it. I'm not sure I do actually. I think I've only got like weird security bits and stuff. Yep, it's all pretty much tri-wings and stuff. Looks like I'm just gonna have to rely on elbow grease. All right, I gotta check and see. I'm gonna actually go back and look at my old footage because um, I don't remember exactly what order I did these screws in here. And I wanna make sure that I hit them just right uh, before I get working on that back cover. So I'm gonna go check on that, be right back. All right, yeah, I'm pretty sure that uh, we just go ahead and put those screws back in anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. That's what I thought, but I just wanna be sure. an extra one of these screws <laughs> and I seem to be missing one right here so I'm gonna go hunt that up be right back all right guys we are on home stretch here uh, now I just realized of course as I was putting this together that <laughs> I'm gonna have to take uh, some more of these screws back out when I put the, uh, the the fan back in but that's okay that happens to me all the time when I'm doing this stuff uh, but the next thing we want to do is uh, get our HDMI port ready 
uh, which is uh, what this little PCB is for. So we can see that our flex cable has run uh, up through here and along the back and it's gonna connect um, on the inside of uh, this panel which snaps into place here. And it uh, is going to set on this very convenient lip uh, and just like what a, what a brilliant design uh, that, uh, that Dan put together for this. This is just, this is great. So uh, basically we are gonna set that right in there like so trace around that port and then we are going to uh, very carefully uh, drill out and um, file our hole uh, to get it so uh, that we'll have a nice port right here. So I need to go grab a fine tip marker and now you really don't want your uh, you really don't want your board rattling around on you when you're doing it so once you've got it uh, in place, make sure you know you really kind of hold it down with your thumb. And go ahead and outline. Okay, that looks pretty good. So that is our port. We want to cut out right there. So the way that I'm probably going to go about this uh, would be to one thing I'm going to need to do is be careful about the bottom. I do want to try to get it cut as close to the shape of that port as I can. Um, but yeah, I'm basically going to drill out the middle and then kind of file my way uh, out from there. So I'm going to uh, basically what I'm going to go do is go uh, drill those out real fast then come back uh, and kind of show you the approach I'll do with filing. Okay, so here you can see I've uh, drilled my pilot holes for that. They look on this side and it's kind of like, oh no, they're they're not lined up or anything, but that's perfectly fine. We've already drawn uh, our bounds on there. Uh, so basically the next part is just a matter of uh, removing uh, the rest of that plastic uh, so we can then start, start filing. Uh, usually for this, um, for this particular part, um, I'll use, uh, actually I've got a nice X-Acto uh, set uh, that I like to use here. And it's got like a bunch of different uh, blades. Uh, sometimes this little saw blade uh, comes in pretty handy. Um, that's still going to be a little too big at the moment. Uh, so I think that really I'm just going to use a standard uh, X-Acto blade and go in and start uh, cutting through to remove some of that plastic so I can start getting my my files in there and you know because of how I, I drilled it out you know it, it's it's really not all that that difficult to get in there uh, and remove that that extra plastic as you can see I'm, I'm not even like pressing very hard here anyway that that's pretty much enough to, to get me started right there very nice okay so I also have um, a nice uh, little file set uh, that I use for a lot of this stuff. I don't know if I can get a flat one through there yet. Yeah, well, actually it looks like I can. So anyway, that is gonna be the next part, right? Is, is really just me going in here uh, with my files, uh, getting all this stuff uh, evened up. Uh, which does take a little bit of doing, a little bit of time, a little bit of elbow grease. So I'm gonna go do that uh, and come back and, and show you what it looks like. But basically, if you can see where the holes are and then where the ink is, um, I'm just gonna be uh, filing it down so it matches up with the edge uh, of that, that marker ink there. So I'm gonna go do that and be right back. Okay, so uh, here is our hole that's been filed out. Um, and really, when you're doing one of these, your best friends, flat file for doing the top and the bottom, and uh, a square file, like this, this one's actually squared off, uh, for really getting the upper corners on this uh, to really get everything exact and right. And when you do it correctly, when you slide this in, you'll kind of hear it click into place, like that. And you can see that uh, our opening is just exactly right for our HDMI port. 
and uh, the red PCB is sitting flush against the plastic at the front. So that is basically ready to go. So the next thing we're gonna do is uh, mark our hole, because we need to drill drill a hole right here. And what an, what an awesome design this is. Drill a hole right there um, where we are going to uh, drop a screw and a nut or a nut and a bolt through um, to secure that board into place. I'm gonna go do that, be right back. Okay, I just drilled a little hole through the plastic there. And now we're going to secure that into place. And uh, yeah, get on with get this GameCube wrapped up. Pretty, pretty excited for this. Washer tried to get away from me. I actually drilled that out small enough that that screw is going to thread through there just a little bit. And honestly, that would probably stay put. But uh, we're still going to secure it on the back. All right, that is in there really good. Okay, this next step looks kind of tricky. We're gonna actually uh, connect our cable. So in order to do this, we're gonna kind of need to run it back this way. Move this a little easier to see. Kind of back this way, uh, and it's going to connect basically like this. So this is tricky. I'm just trying to be really gentle with it. The trick is kind of getting both sides in there equally, but I think I'll try to show you there. Uh, but yeah, so we're pretty much good to go now. So now we just want to make sure we don't pinch it as we put this back together. Which really means I just need to keep that sort of pushed down like so and that'll sort of keep it up under this under this piece of plastic and I think that's good I think that's all yeah so that's pretty much the mod uh now I just need to get this thing buttoned back up and we'll go check it out okay I have the GameCube hooked up using my old uh, Super Nintendo line because I, I set it up to use the exact same type of cable uh, I've got it to uh, ready to go uh, into the CRTs here, so let's fire it up and see what we get. Oh, okay. It is working, which is awesome, but it is in 480p, which is not what these monitors are looking for. Uh, so I'm going to hit L, R, X, and Y, bring up the OSD menu, and we will turn our line doubler off, uh, which will turn this back into a signal uh, that my, my pro monitors here can use. So we will Store those settings at X, save the settings. All right, we'll exit our OSD menu. Uh, yeah, so um, this is the, the GC Dual uh, working with uh, RGB S out, which um, looks really great on these uh, pro monitors. You know, usually uh, I'm seeing everything in 240p uh, on these monitors. So, uh, you know, seeing 480i, like I wasn't quite exactly sure what to expect, but it it really looks pretty awesome here. Uh, and actually, I'm even pretty uh, impressed with the, the upscale uh, that the uh, GBSC AIO uh, is doing of it. it. Looks like it's actually handling um, handling it really well. Uh, I believe I have it set to motion uh, adaptive uh, deinterlacing. Um, but yeah, it, yeah, it looks really, really good. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. Um, so we can clearly see that uh, at least the analog port is working. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually unhook this, run an HDMI cable. Um, I don't have a monitor set up down here uh, to use it. So I think I'm just going to run it directly uh, into my capture card. Um, and if it pops up on the screen here, then I will know that uh, both ports work. So I'm gonna go hook that up and we'll check that next. 
Okay, I have the GameCube hooked up via HDMI. Uh, it does use a HDMI mini, which um, I only had one. I had to dig through my uh, pile of cables and find it, but I did. Um, so it's running directly into my capture card. So let's see how this looks. Okay, looks pretty good, actually. Yeah, so this is 480p um, running through my right through my capture card. Yeah, let's check this out. Man, this is exciting. What a, what a cool mod. Um, you know, and they do have the... Uh, a, I think a couple different people make them, like the, the Carby, and uh, I forgot what the name of the other one is. Uh, the Eon, I think, is the name of the, the other um, external uh, version of this that you can hook up. Uh, but, you know, I like having it so I don't have any extra stuff uh, you know, hanging off of my, hanging off the back of my, my, uh, my game console if I can help it. Um, plus for me, I just, I love doing this stuff. It's fun. Um, you know, so, so for me, this is, I don't know, this is just kind of perfect. This is the perfect way to do this. Uh, plus you know, this is good training, uh, for when I do, uh, that we duel that I've got coming up. But, you know, honestly, like I was a little bit nervous about this install just because I'd never worked on a console uh, from this generation, but it, it really wasn't any harder than anything else I've done. So, you know, if you have a, a, a moderate amount of um, soldering experience, I think you'd be just fine trying this out. Wow, this looks really good in 480p. I'm impressed. Very cool. I'm, I'm also actually impressed that uh, I can play this at all. Um, but it doesn't have a ton of lag uh, running through the capture card, surprisingly. Uh, of course, I'm in 13th place, so you can argue that I'm not uh, actually playing it at all. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, I think I'm going to go switch this back over to uh, RGB. Well, this one was a lot of fun. This was a great uh, learning experience. Uh, I always love the GameCube. I don't play it as much, uh, you know, these days. Not for any particular reason. It has some really awesome games, some of my favorites. I just haven't in a while. Um, so this is really kind of a, a fun project just to, um, you know, get to sort of reconnect with a console that I haven't played in, in ages and ages. Uh, but yeah, um, thanks for being here with me and uh, learning, you know, how to do this stuff alongside me. And um, yeah, you know, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a like and subscribe and all that stuff. Uh, but I figured I'd do my sign off uh, and then, you know, go uh, capture some footage, uh, you know, for the end of this thing for anybody that wants to hang out and uh, see more of what uh, this new uh, GC Dual equipped uh, GameCube can do. So uh, yeah, we'll catch you next time. Bye now.